Hello everyone, today we're going to be looking into super resolution. This is a way of getting great pictures even if you've got a crappy camera. So first of all you need a burst of photos like this. You can also do it with a video clip but I like to do it with a, a burst of pictures from my smartphone. So if we just open one of these up and have a quick look at it to start off with. If we zoom in on this a little bit you'll be able to see it's, it's a bit grainy, it's just not a great picture. The light's all wrong, I've got two different light sources. It's just not a great picture. If we zoom in a little further on an edge like, like up here, you can see that we've got all sorts of strange artifacts going on in the corners. It's all very fuzzy. So using a program called Auto Stackertz, which is uh, developed by a German guy, we're going to stack all of these frames from the same video or burst and uh, run them through a program and uh, it should spit out a much, much higher quality picture. First off though, I'm just going to open these all up and it's best to trim them down so I'm going to crop all of these pictures down to a smaller size because the program is uh, for 32-bit windows and it's quite RAM intensive so it should help if we cut them down just to save some time. So here we go, we've got them all cropped down to a slightly smaller size and uh, this way our program should run nice and smoothly. So since I'm using Linux, I'm going to have to use something called Play on Linux so that I can uh, emulate a Windows um, PC basically because this is a Windows only program, it's uh, for 32-bit Windows. You might be able to run it in compatibility mode but uh, if you're on Linux, using Play on Linux is the best way. So I'll run the program and as you can see we're presented with these two windows so go ahead and click on open we need to change this down to image files and then we need to select all of the frames that we've captured now we're only doing it with 10 or so frames so the results won't be amazing but you can do this with thousands of frames and get absolutely stunning results so once all the frames are loaded in we, I'm just going to zoom that out a bit so we can see it there we go uh, we need to change some settings so this is for um, astronomy so we don't want it to be for planets we want it to be for surfaces uh, yep. and now we need to choose a point of reference on here we need to press control and click to put this box on something to help align all the pictures and analyze them usually a nice bright spot so if we look for a nice little bright spot in here down there, that in the middle, that should do. If I hold control and click on that, that will put that box right there. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to analyze all the frames. Now like I said, I'm only doing it with 10 frames here, just to save some time, because it can be quite time intensive. So everything's set as it should be. Yep. Changing this option to this one helps us uh, not lose quality around the edges and this is uh, to show what detail we want to focus on so we want it to focus on very small detail and then we just hit analyze so it's going to analyze all the frames and it's going to account for any movement uh, when I was taking the pictures you see these red borders here uh, it adds those in so that it can uh, counteract any shaking that was going on while I was taking this video or the burst of photos. Once it's all analysed you'll see over here you've got a graph. Uh, we don't need to pay much attention to that, especially not with pictures that are already this quality. Now we need to place these AP points. This is what's going to help the pictures align, the frames align. Um, so we just literally choose a size, uh, you don't want to go too small, it will be very intensive, so we'll go for that one. Click on place AP grid and it's going to automatically recognize some pixels and uh, things in the picture where it, that it can help to uh, align itself with the other frames. And once that's all done we can come over here, we can choose the uh, outputs up here and the number of frames to stack here. So. I'm just going to set that, I mean this is subjective, you can set this to uh, whatever you want and also the percentage of frames here. So I've uh, experimented with this and uh, numbers below 20 are good if you've got loads of frames. 
Now we come over here and just hit stack. It will take a little while, so I'll join you when it's done. And um, once it's finished, you've seen those folders appear on my desktop. That's where the uh, pictures are going to be, the uh, finished edits. So we'll go in, uh, we'll go and have a look at that. Uh, yep. Actually, uh, we'll we'll open one of the originals so that we've got something to compare it to. If you click uh, the sharpen option, it will spit out this one as well, which this is just a completely over sharpened photo. It is um, super resolution as well, but obviously it, it looks terrible. Um, it's just way too over sharpened. Uh, this is for obviously when you're doing astronomy things. I mean, it's, it doesn't look terrible, but it's uh, it's definitely way over sharpened. Uh, we're more interested in uh, the other one. So this one, hang on, zoom it out. This one here. Okay, so let's have a look at this side by side. So I'm going to zoom this in uh, so that we can have a look at the details. I mean, they're not horrible pictures to start off with, but you'll definitely be able to see an improvement uh, when we get into the close-ups. So you should already be able to start seeing improvements here. Um, it definitely looks a lot sharper even from this distance but it's a lot more obvious when you zoom in so remember all those uh, strange artifacts we had here we go in the original all these rough edges compared to here now this is the same camera um, it's just the software that's uh, superimposed the frames on top of each other and sort of corrected for all the stray pixels that we saw earlier so that's pretty much it for our short guide on super resolution um, if you want to know more about it, I will put links in the description to the software that I used. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.